Hey guys, you broke repairs and welcome back to my Liverpool Cremo where last time I left off. I played a game against Nottingham Forest in the league and a game against the Spartak Moscow for in the Champions League. Now, in the episode I have two matches against these two teams that that are from are real life promoted teams. It's Watford and Norwich. Which ironically. So uh obviously they've come back they've come up like they did in real life, obviously although in, in the game as you saw in the last episode as I just mentioned it was Nottingham Forest was the other team that came up whereas in real life it's Bournemouth. Anyway, hey, uh, let's get straight into the game against Watford at home. So that come into Anfield. We're not going to Victory Road boots just yet. We'll be probably going down later in the season. Let's do this. Nah. I want to talk about um, Liverpool's uh, transfer window so far or during the game. So, let's do this. Yeah, I think there's a sign. Okay, here we go. Now, um, let's start with the transfer window. Would the best place to start would probably be with our best signing, and that would be. Uh, for me now, I wanted to talk about the signings last uh, video, but I ended up just talking in depth about how impressed I was by teams like Watford in real life. The length they were going to to um, to make a state the statement that you know, that they're not going to be written off. Well, they're probably going to be written off anyway, but uh, they want to make sure that they don't go down hmm, straight away. They want to stay in the Premier League and they are doing everything in their power to, to make sure that all the other Premier League teams know that they are here to stay. So, should be interesting to see. Yeah. I feel like you know it's it's always easy to pick on the uh, teams that just came up because their teams wouldn't be as used to the Premier League as teams like Mika, Man United, Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, City, you know teams like that who wouldn't, wouldn't ever be fitted for relegation unless you know say. If Arsenal, for some reason, lost all their players or something like that, then maybe if they went into administration or something like that, would be the only reason a big team would really fall. I mean, like, look at what happened to the Rangers. They probably wouldn't have been relegated ever if not for them going into administration, all the problems they're having with, uh, with money. You know, it, it, it's never going to. I don't think it'll, there'll ever be a point where one of the big teams who are always near the top of the table will suddenly drop off. You know, it, it, it's never really happened, you know. Anything that's gone down has, has been in the thing to fight for a few years. Or the team that did unfortunately just come up and, you know, it's just the way it works out, you know, like QPR and um, QPR and Burnley both went back down, whereas Leicester were lucky enough to survive, although Nigel Pearson wasn't lucky enough to survive. His friend, the ostrich, didn't help him out with that. <laughs> uh, but uh, I don't understand why Pearson was sacked, and... Am I the only one thinking, wasn't he sacked in like November and it turned out, oh, he wasn't really sacked? 
So, my the only one who's just waiting for the news that... Oh, it was... A, somebody else who got sacked. It was pers a person's death planning for the new season. It doesn't make any sense. The guy... He turned Leicester into an unstoppable machine. I mean, after that whole incident in Kuroyama, where apparently he got fired and they got rehired and stuff like that. It was crazy. It was really, really confusing as well. Well, it was hard to keep up with, but in the end, you know, he, he kept Leicester up. He kept them up very, very comfortably as well. They, they finished like 15th or something like that. And Leicester were bottom at, at Christmas, weren't they? So, you know, that's normally, normally when you're bottom of the table at Christmas, yeah, <laughs> you're playing in the championship next season. Instead, it's going to be Hull. Who, who I personally didn't even think would get really gay. I, I thought my, my my I was I was preparing to say goodbye to Newcastle if I was being honest. I really thought Newcastle would be good fun. Um, anyway, this is not about that's not this is not what that's about. This is uh, about Liverpool. Um, so far, Liverpool signs you know they've signed some players. They've signed. Well, they've signed a good few players. Oh, uh, there's uh, Roberto Firmino, uh, James Milner, uh, Joe Gomez, who is you know just a uh, just a player for the future. He's not really uh, going to be getting into the starting lineup anytime soon. Mm. Um, unless we get a load of injuries. Um, there's a uh, Danny Ings and um, Bodgan. Bodgan. If I'm saying his name right, probably I'm probably not. But then uh, uh, that's that's just the way it is. For me. So uh, what what have we signed? We've signed a goalkeeper. Well, granted, uh, yeah, we. We, we sign a goalkeeper, but we still need one. We still need to sign a top-class goalkeeper because Minule is definitely not good enough. Minule needs to be replaced. I, I like Bodkan saying, oh, I'm going to try and get the number one spot from Minule. Didn't Brad Jones say that? The answer is yes, by the way. The answer is yes, he did say he was going to get the number one spot from Minule. Mm, and he did for a while. Although, it didn't work out. Jones didn't exactly... He wasn't an improvement. And someone who came from Bolton, no offence to Bolton, but Bolton finished like 17th in the championship. Yep. We need to finish is higher than... We want a fan. It's Liverpool's goal to get number one, not number 17 in, in the championship. I know we're not in the championship, but we want to be number one in the Premier League. There's a very distinctive difference. And like I said, no offense to Bolton. No, I'm sure. And Neil Lennon will get him up given time. But. No, like, Bogdan is a good goalkeeper. He is a good goalkeeper. You know, he kept us, he kept our striker, his FA, when we faced uh, them in the in the FA Cup. But no, no, this is that's not, no, that's not a reason to sign in Bogdan. You sign a goalkeeper because. You either want to put pressure on your main goalkeeper or replace him. Brendan Rodgers, realistically, has done neither. Because... Minule, if I'm Minule, I'm looking at Liverpool bringing in Bodgan. I'm like, I'm like, okay, they've brought in someone to keep the bench warm. Because this guy's not going to replace me. And that's what Minule is thinking. He knows his position is safe no matter what he does. 
Yes. Jones, Jones could have had the spot, and Jones would still be here if he had done a good job of in the, in the number one slot. But now he's gone, and now Bob Gunn is taking it. So, uh, yeah. Liverpool, realistically, we need another an, another goalkeeper. Preferably, someone to actually take over from Minulek, because Minulek is rubbish. So, uh, right there, that's, that's, that would be classified as, we'll see, but I'm, until I, until we replace Minule, Bogdan is a bad signing. Then, I'm not going to include Joe Gomez in this, who could be good and who could be bad, you know, we, we don't know, you know, he could be good or all bad, but, you know, he, it's too early to tell, and plus, we're not going to really see a lot of him on this, we watch the youths play, and, um, I occasionally watch the youth team play, just to see what Liverpool fans can look forward to in the future. That's how I knew Raheem Sterling before he got promoted to the main team. That's how uh, a lot of people who who watch who watch the youths knows how good Sterling was with the youths. But that's not the point. So uh, I. You know, we we'll we'll see how he gets on. But uh, you know probably won't be a major he uh he probably won't make a major impact in the first team. He might play in a cup game against like a lower tier team in like earlier rounds of the calling or the FA Cup. Up later in the uh when we start playing in those but until then, he's going to be playing with the Utes. Um, Milner. People are saying I'm too hard on and I'm judging Milner too fast. I'm sorry, who's the one who made a video saying Lovren wouldn't be worth 20 million? Hmm. I, kn I know, I know the answer to this. Hang on, he's got black hair. His face is coming to me now. I'm looking at in the reflection of my PC. He's playing this right now. He's talking to you. Who? Oh yeah, it was me! I said Lovren would be shit. And, and guess what? I freaking called it because I was right. He was useless. He was a waste of twenty million. He was worthless. And Lo and Lalana, he didn't even play because he was injured half the season. Hmm. Hmm. Granted, so was Daniel Sturridge, but Daniel Sturridge wasn't a new signing. But we bought for 25 million, we bought storage for 15 million, and in his first season, he paid that back. So, Lalana, Lovren, Sacco, all shit. What does that tell me? Liverpool need a centre back. A world class centre back. Because right now, what are our sent back options? We have Emre Can, who Brent Rogers doesn't want to play at centre back, even though he can. We have Col Yolo Colo Torre, who for some reason dropped off the face of Brent Rogers' radar uh, last season after he came back from the African Cup of Nations, despite. Being our best defender beforehand, and he vanished and took our good form with him because then we fucking lost to United and Arsenal, and then our season just went to shit from there. We have Martin Skirtle, who realistically is our best defender, but 
Huh? We have... We can't rely solely on one centre-back because normally you have at least two. And depending on what formation you play, you could even have three. There's no formation in the world that I know of that plays with one centre-back. I wish there was, because Liverpool would probably be using that formation. And if it worked, hallelujah. But that's not the case. So, Brendan, I assign a new centre-back. Actually, that's, only, that's all you need to do. Sign a new centre-back. Do not go for you. Go for someone who is experienced, has, has done, has accomplished something. Hmm? No? Ooh. Ooh. Here's a hint. Spend some freaking money. You got a good start with Firmino, and yet we're spending 3.5 million on a youngster, and the rest were all free. Granted, Ings had a tribunal for fee, but we'll get to Ings in a second. So, oh yeah, we still need a centre back. Right back, we needed a right back. We signed Klein. Hmm. I want I want I want to give Klein a chance because Klein was good at Southampton. And if we are lucky, maybe Klein will, will will help Lovren play as good as Lovren was playing at Southampton. Hmm. Who knows? Maybe we'll get lucky. The chances aren't are good. We won't because we're Liverpool. Well, luck doesn't seem to favour us ever. You know, it's it's not something we come into contact regularly. So, uh, yeah, we need a centre-back. Someone like, I don't know, maybe anybody who plays for a big major team. Like, don't, don't, burden, sign a big-name centre-back might be the difference between you keeping your job or losing it to someone in, like Jurgen Klopp who could easily bring in someone in, like, I don't know, Matt Hummels. And do you want that, Rogers? No, you don't. So get on it. As long as he's a big name as and plays for a big team, it doesn't matter how much you have to spend. Just freaking spend. That's all we want. We want to. See the team improve, and the not, and you haven't improved the central of defense. No offense to Gomez, but he is not the answer because he's 18, and will probably not play a first team for match unless we are plagued with centre back injuries, and I mean plagued as in like to. To no extent. To the point where we're freaking playing Bogdan as a centre back. That's how bad it will have to get. Like I said, Klein could be the answer to Lovren, but we'll have to wait and see. I still would rest easier if we signed a big name centre back. Next, Milner, James Milner, James Milner. People, people are were giving me a, we're having a go at me because. I was saying, you know, he's not going to be good enough. We don't really need him. 
Mm. Well, I'm, I've, I'm, ma I'm making a deal. Same deal as before. Or like with Lovren, I will give him a chance. And if he's good, if he does good, I will apologize. I will say, okay, I was wrong about him and, and I'll never quit Jeff someone again. And if I'm right and he's shit like I was with Lovren, I will be telling you all I told you so again. And we'll be back here again next summer. Huh. Right. Under new management because if we don't play well, Rogers will be losing his job to either Hurricane Cop or maybe Corey Peters. <laughs> just just putting it out there. Yeah, Rogers, Klopp's not your only concern. I want that job. And it will be mine. Sooner or later, it will be mine. I mean, look at look at look at the team I am playing with. This could be the real life team. Yeah. That's how good I am. I could make every single one of these players. I could get every single one of these players playing for Liverpool. This could be Liverpool's lineup one day. All it'll take is a little, little persuasion and a little magic from myself. It just depends on whether Klopp will beat me to the job or not. And if he does, fair juice to him. But I'll be standing in line if he ever loses it. Which he probably won't, because it's your own clock. Anyway, uh, Firmino. As long as we play him with Continuo, I can't see anything wrong with this signing. Firmino's a really good player. And, you know, being with players like Continuo and Lucas, he'll be able to understand the team. Continue will definitely will get him used to what Liverpool is about and he will definitely supply the goals for for people like Daniel Sturridge which here's hoping and, and probably Danny Ings as well. So let's move swiftly on to Mr Ings, shall we? Yes, that seems like a very, very good idea. So, Danny Ings. While, yes, I'm kind of excited, I'm kind of nervous as well. Because, if anyone recalls, in a few seasons ago, there, there was a team in... Premier League that they had just gotten promoted. They were managed by he, he, he the maddest yet hilarious manager that is Ian Holloway. The nickname was the Tangerines. And you guessed it, it's Blackpool. Oh, oh. Since then, they're not doing so well. We'll probably wish they still had Ian Holloway. <laughs> he, but, you know, what? Can you do? So, Blackpool had this really good player who got, well, got promoted and he scored a lot of really good goals, including not two against Man United. Anyone remember what that player's name is? If you guess Charlie Adam, you are correct. It was indeed the Scottish man himself, Charlie Adam. When Blackpool got relegated, unfortunately, despite their best effort against Manchester United, they were it wasn't good enough. They got relegated, and Charlie Adam joined Liverpool. Charlie Adam in the season when Blackpool went down scored twelve goals. Okay, fair enough. And I think he was the top goal scorer this season. He got promoted. Fair enough, you know. That, that sounds eerily familiar to Ings, because Ings was Burnley's top scorer when they got promoted. 
And he got 11 goals, one less than Charlie Adam. But it's okay. Charlie Adam is still well, firing them away for Liverpool. Oh, wait. We sold them almost like a year later to Stoke. Huh. The uh, same Stoke that beat us 5 1. And yeah, that's why I'm kind of nervous. Well, yes, Ings and Charlie Adam are obviously way different players because Adam is a central mid and Ings is a striker. It still kind of worries me, you know, whenever we sign someone from a team that got relegated. I'm like, really? Really, you were signing him? You know, he, he was good for them, but we're a different team. It'd be like he could have a full sign. You know, player from my team in the conference. And while that has worked before, we, when we signed Ian Rush back in the day, he, he came from a no he came from Chester who I think were at the time were either in the lowest division or they were in the conference. And he turned out and he became one well, a legend and a top highest and a top goal scorer and is still today, and probably will be for a very long time. But is Ings good enough to replicate that? We'll have to wait and see, but it does make me nervous that we're signing players from teams that are getting relegated. And who are we signing from teams that actually finished around us? Klein and Milner. Well, Klein had a good season. What did Milner really do? Anybody? Like I said, I'll give Milner a chance. I'll give Ings a chance, but realistically, we still do need another striker. No offense, this is not like I'm not saying we need someone another circuit because I think Ings will be a bad sign. It's we realistically need another striker just in case Daniel Sturridge has another injury he fills season. You know, like I said, luck doesn't typically he follow Liverpool around. So having another striker just in case would really, really help. See, we need a striker like Icardi who can do that. The only problem is Icardi, I think he signed a new deal with Milan, so we'd have to offer a really big amount of money. But then we're being linked with Higuain, who I'm thinking, if, if we sign Higuain, what was the point in signing Ings? Because if we have a fit Daniel Sturridge and Higuain, Ings isn't going to play. I mean, unless he plays out on the wings or something. But realistically, there's no place for Ings if we have a full he fit Daniel Sturridge and Gonzalo Higuain. I'd love to sign Gonzalo Higuain, but it would make the signing of Ings completely pointless. We should get someone who is maybe at Ings' level. We were or at some point linked with a with another fallen mm, mm, reggae team striker, uh, Charlie Austin. But now it seems like he's going to be going to West Ham, which would be a good sign for the uh, for the Hammers or the Irons. What are they called now? Are they still the Hammers? But 
every time I watch Spencer Rowan, he says, come on, you irons. Is it, is it the irons or the hammers? Because I, I really do not understand. It's getting really confusing. You know, head up in the park. At least while they're there. Now even Upton Park is a different name. That's the bowling ground. When did that happen? And can't things ever keep their own name? I mean, first it was Newcastle will be coming, going to changing St. James's Park to Sports Direct Arena. That didn't work out. Well, for God's sake, as long as you're there, come on, call it. Upton Park, so we don't get confused and, and choose this way of the irons or the hammers, please, West Ham. Just, just for me, okay? Just for me, okay? Otherwise, I'm just gonna call you the hammers. Because I don't care if you're still the hammers or not, you're the hammers to me. Okay, that's who I know, West Ham has. I'm sorry if I'm offending any West Ham fans and you're like, ah, oh, you stupid idiot. But I, I don't understand why. What was all the naming changes? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and anyway, I have rambled on to the end of the video. Oh, oh, two successful victories over Norwich and Watford. If Liverpool can do that in real life, I'd be very surprised because we have a very poor record when it comes to teams who've just gotten promoted. It, it. Anyway, until next time, we'll see you all later. Until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe if you did.